multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. Join with people from around the world praying 15 minutes Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 667-770-1402. Code 974-8029-POUND. Church Critic by Dr. Larry D. Reed. An examination of the Larry Reed Live show perspective. Purchase a copy today by logging on to LarryReedLive.com. That's LarryReadLive.com. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page, and hit the bell. Text LRL to 404 999 7527. That's the words LRL to 404 999 7527. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. Patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Let me tell you why you should join. You will gain access to master level teaching and coaching, which includes Sunday morning prayer calls with Dr. Reed, Wednesday night breakdown with Dr. Reed, the prophets and care pastors, divine partnerships and networking with the like minded community, exclusive content, which includes daily posts ranging in topics that are too expensive to share on Dr. Reed's public platform, including money, health and wellness, entrepreneurship, relationships, prophecy, prayer, and more. Become a member today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live today. We're about to have a conversation. My name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host of Larry Reed Live, your most favorite digital entertainment news and talk show out here on these internet streets. And we, on yesterday, done a live a Tuesday, which is a different day for us. That's why you need to text and make sure you know whenever I am live. And the way that you do that is by texting this number, 404-999-7527. And text it right now so that you can know whenever I am live. Hey, Flame Monroe. Flame Monroe, you're somebody I want to interview. Now, we have someone between us. I think y'all are not okay. But me and her, we are, we are friends. But I still want to interview you. Um, of course, she would have to be on top of it. But I absolutely think that you are terribly intriguing. And I like what it is that you be saying. I find what you say very intriguing flame Monroe. so i want to talk to you so if you're down with it text me we 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 won't use our our people to contact our people just hit me up dm send me that birthday what airport you flying out of fly you in have this interview and get it done flame Monroe. okay now get back to what i was saying so last night the original church news church news vlogger that done it before me i know most of you know me, and I'm probably the most popular one, but he originated it. And I wanted you guys to know who he was, and I wanted you guys to give him his flowers. He's still doing it the way that he do it, and it's um, funny as hell. 
I would say the way that he does it is unique to himself. And I'm not going to judge it one way or the other, although it is not the way that I work. And some of the things that he said last night, and we had absolute fun. You need to go check it out. Go to youtube.com slash Larry Live. It was absolutely hilarious and I had fun. No, we do not agree on everything. If you follow me, you already know. By no means is what I'm saying on this live is like, oh, let me do some damage control. Because I don't have to do damage control. Um, because I didn't say or do anything that I need to fix. However, I want you guys to be very clear that he adds a lot of um, commentary to whatever is being talked about. And they are his views. I don't have to agree with his views. He does not agree with mine. And that's the reason why you watch or do not him or me. Because you can make that choice. However, he's terribly funny and he did carve out and birth a whole sector that me and you were all enjoying now. He mentioned Tasha's titty. Everybody put in the chat Tasha's titty. I call it chest meat. Gospel singer Tasha, Tasha Page Lockhart was sexually assaulted. That was her words. That's what she called it. So that's what I am saying. Um, Tasha's titty was grabbed and it was massaged. Allegedly, initially it was a mistake. It was a little. But then when this particular person realized that they had grazed her tits, then they went back for a second grab and grabbed her left chest meat piece. Her left chest meat piece. Her left chest meat piece. And put their hand upon it. And then began to say, Oh, I got these titties in my hand. Titties, 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 titties. And at this moment, mind you, let me give you the occasion of what was happening in her mind. And I know it's, it's funny, but it's not. In her mind, she goes back to her violation. Not only was she raped, but she was also molested. Not only was she molested, but she was also raped. So it was a trigger for her. Probably a trigger as well because of who it was. And I'm not saying their name because she's not. Um, but the moment she do, I will. And at that moment, I will probably call that person. Although I can go ahead and tell you right now that that person's legal representative, who I believe to be their legal representative, has already contacted me. And I've also heard what has been said on that side. And they are saying that it never happened. But there's a problem with that because there are other people that said it did. Um, so... And then there are other people that are saying, according to my sources, that are saying they have experienced the same thing. So if Tasha Page Lockhart goes after the person that touched her left chest meat piece, then it's probably going to look something like the whole P. Diddy and whoever else. One person come out, then all these other people come out. So... Asking me who is a race waste of your time because I'm not going to tell you. That means you don't know how I work. So I'm not going to be telling you who unless or until it becomes public. But she did go public and say that she had a horrible experience, which is what made me call her. And when I call her, she didn't answer. So I text and then she responded to my text and she told me by name who it was and that they grabbed her left chest meat piece. That's right. Now this is the situation that came up with Will McRae on last night. What he said about her is her past life and what she used to do. And whatever comments he made commentary about her 
some other her body parts. It's just commentary. That's what he chose to do. And it just the nature of the business. If you know that kind of business, it's just how it is. So that's neither here nor there. Um, then I talked with her this morning and she's been supported quite a bit. But she's also been intimidated purposely to get her to not name this person because this is a very important person. And at the same at the same time, to tell this story, we have to bring other names in. And these are people that I know and know personally. Hence, when Tasha told me this, I was able to text or call everybody in that room except for maybe one or two people who were gospel artists or legends. And basically everybody confirms her story but they just tell it from their standpoint and some of them are sympathizing with her and others with the person that grabbed her left chest meat piece her titty so that it confirms that a situation an exchange with her titty being touched happened Absolutely. And then now they're spinning around and saying it did not happen. Then somebody else says, a witness says, he didn't mean for it to happen. Um, then somebody else is saying, um, no, she she got in the way or she didn't do, the, you know, so it, be, it turns into all of this stuff. So what I did, as I like to do, I just connected her with the lawyer that has jurisdiction in the proper spaces and places. And that lawyer is going to take care of her. Now, what does that mean? Now, let me connect this with the Bishop Jakes and Manasseh. When, and let's not have too much judgment around this. When somebody has something done to them, if they can prove it, or have very strong circumstantial evidence, then they usually file court cases. And the period prior to the filing, typically you put the other person on notice, the defendant, that I'm about to file a lawsuit against you. At that moment, they can keep it from the filing because once it's filed, it goes through a process and they're going back and forth. There's discovery. So there could be other things that come out that you do not want to be discussed or discovered or uncovered. So what happens is people, they pay money or provide recompense, repair, um, and it usually money is involved for everybody to walk away as complete as possible. So the, the, the person who is accusing somebody, the plaintiff or the accuser, maybe plaintiff, there would be a plaintiff, but right at that moment they're an accuser. They get some kind of compensation, some kind of repay and repair for what it is they dealt with. And then the defendant that has been blamed or the accused they're able to keep it from blowing up to where now everybody can read all of the details of this person's account, you know, and it becomes this melee. So that is the normal process of things. It's going to be hard to prove it if the others don't cooperate with the truth. Well, see, that's the thing. Once you file and you get into and you get subpoenaed, they don't have no choice but to show up and say something. They could lie at that moment, but Two of them better not because they told me. So, <laughs> and I, when I go in a court stand and say what I said, the judge always believed and protect me. It has never not happened. So that wouldn't be smart if you were watching for you to have told me one thing then go and tell in the court of law another thing because I'm going to come behind you and I'm going to tell the truth because yes I love 
Actually, I know all these people involved and I love all of them and honor them. However, if you ask me the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth and I don't care who you is. Just simple as that. But this is what I can commit to my viewers. What I can commit to you is whether Tasha Page Lockhart is paid off for her left chest meat piece being grabbed or not. I'm going to tell you because I'm going to find out. There's no way for them to hide it from me. Same thing with the Manasseh and Bishop T.D. Jakes. If Manasseh is paid off, and I've been saying this from the beginning, it's the work of his lawyers, the way things go. If he is paid off, for lack of better words, I'm going to come back and tell you. And the good thing about um, both situations is that I have receipts that I have not shared, that I have not told anybody that I have that I have. So when I come back and tell it, I'm going to tell it with receipts. Um, right now, because of Cassie and Diddy, everybody's interested in a settlement. Um, but the thing is, for those of you that want to go and lie to authorities, make sure you have evidence because if you don't, then you be taking your own self to court to lose. But if you just have a story, you better stay out of the courts. But if you got some evidence that proves what you're saying is the truth, which I believe Cassie did, which is why she got paid. But now we see how all of that is going. But Tasha was triggered up because of the grab and the grope to the point to where she got visibly upset and this is what she told me and the account of two others that was there that told me in confidence. Um, well, I'm going to have to go ahead and tell you this. And I recorded it. So those of you that came and told me your eyewitness account, I recorded it. Don't get mad with me. It's the nature of the job. If it's concerning a story, I have to protect myself because people say I lie and then try to sue me. But I have not lost a case for this reason because folk do not want to fuck with me when it comes to the truth because you're just going to lose. Um, so nobody don't need to be lying on nobody. And nobody don't need to be... And you best not lie on me because then I'm going to have to be forced to come out and fight for myself. And when I do that... I'm going to tell the whole story. So you don't want to do that. So y'all do y'all little settlements. That Well, some of them ain't little. They ain't none of them little. But y'all do y'all little settlements that you want to do. And just carry that out. And I'm going to do my job afterwards. But don't bother me. Because then you're going to have a problem. Because I ain't got no NDA sign. This mouth is free. Okay. So, um, somebody said, plus the pictures are out there who she was in company with, so you're good. Yeah, I did see some some pictures, but I don't have any comment. I'm not confirming nothing. <laughs> I mean, because I said I wouldn't, and I don't think I should. If, if it haven't been said publicly, that's not what I'm going to do. I don't operate like that, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, what else I'm going to tell y'all? So this the Manasseh, Tasha, uh, oh, Carton, Carton Pearson. Um, William had statements concerning Carton Pearson and my spiritual father, Bishop, the arts, Bishop Bernard Jordan, America's black prophet of God to the whole wide world. And I've seen the, that commentary on his platform before. So I knew if these names come up, he was going to stay true to whatever his commentary was, and he did. And I didn't have no problem with that because that's his viewpoint. And on my platform, you know, we praise, we glorify and thank the Lord for my mentor, Archbishop Ebernard Jordan, as well as, and I'm, I embrace him as a mentor as well, um, 
I did Bishop Carton Pearson. There were always speculations surrounding, in light of what William said, there were always speculations of surrounding Bishop um, Carton Pearson's sexuality. For that reason, I dropped little seeds on my platform concerning how those speculations were just that and was not true. If Bishop Carlton Pearson was a same gender loving man, I would tell y'all at this point, he's gone. He's on the other side doing what he does. I would tell y'all if I know it to be the truth, even if I speculated and thought it, I would tell y'all. Um, Cause it's okay. I feel like it's okay to say it right now, but it's not true. And there's no evidence and me and Bishop Carlton Pearson have had the most intimate and the most inappropriate sexual conversations about other folk business, our business, and everything in between. I 100% know. And let me say this, and you know who I'm talking to. In fact, if you, gonna, if you got any inkling right now that what I'm about to say is somebody that you have direct access to, press record and send, them to, to send this to them. If there is anything broadcasted or written by any family member questioning the sexuality of Bishop Carton Pearson, I'm going to drop every single receipt on your lying, alleged lying, and alleged whoredom. Now, you know who you are. I respect you, but I respect Bishop Carton Pearson's legacy more. And I will use all of what I have been given to reveal the truth about you. So don't do that. Oh my God, I feel like I'm threatening people today. Oh my God, I'm not threatening. I'm just saying this. I'm just telling you don't do nothing crazy and crazy won't be done. All right. And for this reason, I went on Spiritual Son D.E. Polk platform. I don't know if you saw it. I did bring it on my platform, so you should have saw it on uh, YouTube.com slash Larry Live. I said there's no there's no truth to the whole rumors around surrounding Bishop Carton Pearson's sexuality. It's just not true. Um, Carton also made comments concerning Bishop, my bishop, and my mentor, and his son. I think there were jokes and rumors that I've heard. I don't care. Um, it's, uh, he was Ben William. And I think that's okay to do. It wasn't bad, in my opinion. It's just what he say. He said, William made, not Carlton. Oh, what did I say? I said wrong. I said comments that William made. Did I say Carlton? I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I said. But, um, yeah, comments that William said, that he said concerning my mentor. They were, um, so I said those jokes weren't funny to me. That's fine. It was to me. Even when it came to the jokes of the people that I love and even myself. Remember when me and William were not dealing and was like upset with each other for it said three years, but I'm thinking more like five years. Um, he would do stories on me and tell lies. And he asked me about them live, about me being engaged to some trans woman. I don't know where that came from. And, and they told me afterwards that they actually was a trans woman that came on somebody's live on YouTube and done like a confession that she was engaged with me. I'm like, you know, people, they, I, you know, I didn't even know that. And I don't know why people do that. I do know why clout clicks and views and significance, but that is very interesting. Um, never happened, never occurred. Anyway, so I did not mind him saying what it is that he needed to say. Um, that is just what it is. My baby mama said, I want him to say what he had to say about me to my face. <laughs> You can't take William seriously. 
I mean, I guess sometimes you should, but I don't. It's his viewpoint. Y'all saw what he said. He basically said that he is prejudiced. He don't like dark-skinned people. And there's a story behind that he, that he shared because, of course, Shamako was in the studio and Shamako going to Shamako. So he could not let William go out the door without telling him in detail what he did not like about what he said. And there were two things. One thing was when he used the word jigaboo and talked about saying darky and all of that. He could not stand that. And then the statement that um, he said, two statements about reporting when somebody passed and how people get real sensitive during surrounding people's passing. Michael didn't like that. And he did not like when he said how children that are born outside of wedlock are bastards. And he really laid into that. Michael did not like that either. And it was all over from those of you that know Shamako, he do not know how to let nothing go, even if it's killing him. But he best learn or we're going to be going to his funeral. But I am the very opposite. I do not. I, it, I do not care. That's your opinion. That's what you think. I'm glad you letting me know that you are a bigot. You're biased. You're prejudiced. That lets me know who I'm dealing with. I already knew these things, but it was different for Shamako. And that is just what you think. And I don't have no problem with that because that's what you think. Um, I, it doesn't matter that much to me. Somebody said the colorism comment repeatedly were horrible, him saying bastards. Okay. He said Macintosh did coke. He said somebody else done coke. But you know, those people can take him to court and do defamation if they want to. That's the way he do commentary. He just say stuff. And I don't know if he have evidence or not. I'm pretty sure likely not. But it's just the way that he does what he does. It's not that big of a deal for me. And maybe because I am an entertainer as well. And it, it just ain't that big of a deal. The shock factor and the funny of it is exciting and exhilarating to me. I, I love being shocked and couldn't believe he said this and that. It was fun to me. Now, if are people harmed? I think that's a stretch of the word. Maybe they're irritated. Maybe they don't like what he said. If he said you did coke and you don't. If he said you're, you're puss thinking and don't. You know... I guess depending on the person, it could be really, truly harmful, I guess. You know, but I think when it comes to social media and commentary, everybody, including the person that has been the topic of discussion, need to really take it with a grain of salt and not take it that serious. Because people just be talking. Remember, that's why I wrote this song. You ain't talking about nothing. It ain't that serious. So I said, William apologized to Marco. He didn't apologize to Marco because I'm sure the look on his face was red and sharp. It was, but he didn't. He said, this is, this is why I think this. He said, this has been my experience. He said, and my great, my grandmother taught us, made us look at dark-skinned people a certain way. And that was my experience. Dark-skinned treated us bad as light-skinned. Well, you know, William comes for money and prestige. The... This is what we experience with dark people. This is what we experience with people born outside of red, red lot. And, this, and they tease me. They've done this. So that's where his vantage, that's his vantage point. And I understand that. Don't make it right. Um, it's just as it is. No, he didn't apologize. But what he did say, which I found interesting, we didn't get this on camera because we did shoot footage as soon as he came through the door. It's about 15 minutes, and I'm going to post that in Patreon of all the behind-the-scenes conversation. So if you are on Patreon, you'll get to see it. It'll be dropped on Thursday. It will not be dropped on the main platform unless me or my team or Spirit have another plan. It's going in Patreon. So you can sign up for Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Larry Live. And you'll be able to watch the soon he got out the car all the way to the studio. We walked through the house, so we recorded that. Marco says, being that I've worked with so many children, they are terribly hurt by not having their father in their life. Yeah, I have too. But y'all, this is the internet. And this we're in a world that is filled with people who think different than us. And... 
we shouldn't have a lot of judgment around it. Just hear it. And I'm pretty sure Shamako, after he explained why he think that way, you were able to understand. Being called a bastard and saying they are not important pissed me off. You have a father who claims you and a mom. Why are you pissed off? And that's just too much. It's, that's energy you can use for something else. It's going to mess with your heart and your day. I, I don't know why that is too much. Okay, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that was kind. Then I go to the next thought. I don't get stuck in, in that. And it's not your feeling. It's not even your experience. I feel it because I've worked with bastards. You know, I'm, I'm taking care of some bastards that aren't my own children. But, uh, bastard means fatherless. And it's just his regular definition. It's probably not a kind way to classify somebody. But if you don't have a father actively in your life, you've been bastardized. Um... Just a word for children born out of wedlock. Or, and children who were born to fathers who don't claim them. Yeah. I left but was conjured back and he still was talking. <laughs> yeah, he talked slow. Yeah. So, I think I'm going to do another show with him. What's this, April? Let some things happen. Let's see what happened with Natasha Page Lockhart. What happens with the Manassas and Bishop T.D. Jakes. I'm pretty sure it's about time for Leandro to do something or say something that's going to go viral. Um, we did discuss the Thai trip. He may do some more interviews. I would like to interview him, but I don't, I don't know if he would do that again. We've had one interview. Uh, I do want to do Flame on Road. That was just in here. And there's some others I'm supposed to do. So... Uh, Somebody said he was funny, but he talked over you so many times. He talked over everybody. He, it's his real life personality. This, and I just let him do it. I mean, what do what I got to do? Stand in my ego. This is my show. Do not over talk me. That, that would seem very powerless and weak of me. I'm a whole nigga boss. No need for that. You need a once a month crossover. I think every about six weeks, I probably could take it. I can't, I can't take a lot of William in that mode. His regular every day daily is fine, but when he get into that thing, he over talking and he just saying obnoxious, which is his brand stuff. I can't do it so much, and my energy run out. Then have a break. Yeah, we good on William. No more interviews with him. Mm -hmm. It's too interesting for me not to do another one with him. And he is the goat in the church news. Well, he was the goat. Right now, I am. <laughs> it was proven last night. I'm the best. But I'm going to always honor him, you know, because without him, uh, maybe there wouldn't be a me. So, even though that's how he was taught at some point, it turns into a choice to remain in on a biased state. William is immature, of mature age to have had some positive interaction with people at some point. According to him, he hasn't. That was the conversation we had after the camera went off. It looks like he hasn't. Yeah. yeah. So that was fun. Had a great time and it was a um, great conversation. Yeah. You said a Lucinda Moore interview would be a good time. If she gonna be the Lucinda off camera Lucinda, it would. But she has a ministry, so there may be some things she can't say. So but off air you guys will be cackling at Lucinda Moore. All of us have biases stemming from how we were taught and the things we went through. People just don't want to admit it openly like him. Yes, I agree with that 100%. What did William smell like? Oh, he had on a whole bunch of cologne. Honestly, like a church mother. No lie. He smelled like a first lady, an older first lady. That kind of perfume. Yep. Any update on Kiara? No. I did send word to tell them both to follow each other for the time being. It ain't that serious. Everybody ain't got to know what's going on with you. Lucinda said, who won't? Yes, I will. Okay, then. That's a done deal then. <laughs> I mean, because we have a relationship outside of all of this and have for years. Yeah. 
Yeah, somebody said white. Lisa said white diamonds. Yeah, red door. <laughs> ah, yeah, that was the smell I remember. No stench, no smell. He smelled. He smelled like a church lady. Honestly, and I'm trying to be shady. No. Yeah. So he weird. He don't like black women, but he wants to be one. Ooh, okay, that's a little shady. Yeah. But yeah, so I just wanted to address Carlton Pearson, Tasha, Jake, and Manassa. And what else? The, was there something else I needed to um, address? Because I'm only going to talk about this one time. And then I'm going to drop the behind the scenes in Patreon. It'll be on tier one. For those of you that want to sign up, you go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash Larry Reed Live. Is there something else I needed to address? Can y'all put it in the chat that from, from last night? I'm glad he brought up about me being um, engaged to a trans woman because that wasn't true. Uh, I forgot about it. How did you feel about his comments about Manassa's appearance? It was jokes. Manassa used to that. I still joke on Manassa's appearance. Manassa is, when he lose that weight and let his hair out, he looks, he looks like, I would call him prophetess Manassa. Just a joke. He looks so much better on your platform. Took 20 years off of him. Yeah, because he hold his camera and go wrong and light and be improper. Yeah, how he looked on the show last night is how he looked in person. Yeah. Yes, I discussed the Carton Pearson already. Mm. Great point. Who would watch if William wasn't William? Proper. We love watching train wrecks, and that's relative to whatever. How will we view a wreck? Yeah. You haven't heard the trans one? Yeah. I heard it year by when all this stuff started in 2019. I just forgot it was so much. It was so many of them. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. Not one rumor that was ever said about me, including the illegal ones, criminal ones, are true. Not one. Except for my first, my last name, and maybe the first or last name of some of the people in my life around me. Maybe a if they put out one of my addresses, I'm, I, at least I think I probably had that place as an address one time. I, I don't know. And, and nothing else is the truth. It's always, it, there would, it would be good if it was just the truth, but it's always a, a true fact mixed with the narrative and then it, something else pasted with it to, to go along into something crazy. Um, so all of you that hate me and can't stand me and hoping stuff is true, I'm so sorry to report it's not. Um, truth walks, lies run. That lie go around the world of five hundred times before the truth. But oh my God, I want none of that truth. It just seemed like it would. But now, then you start feeling that you've been hoodwinked, and then you come back over here to my platform, inbox me, and hit like and text me, which happened. You know, it happens after every time a whole bunch of lies. Then I end up getting all these old people coming back. I never believed it. But you over there in the chat hitting like and watching. You should have been watching. And then you got the weird people who go over there and watch and send it to me when they see somebody online lying about me. I'm like, I don't care. And you think I'm going to address that and bring attention to it? It's not even in my intention. You bring it to me. In fact, you go to hell and block yourself and don't come back where I'm at. What did you think of his voice demeaning when he brought up Jamal? He's in love with Jamal. I don't care what he said. I said it to his face. It's true. He, he in love with him. And that's fine. Clearly there is something about him that women love. Um, I can't figure what it is. He's a good speaker and he dressed well. So I get it. I get it. Especially church women. Why did he lie to your face about saying some of his real hair was mixed in with the fake when that was clearly a whole hair helmet? I think what he meant to say, he did say that. Um, what he meant to say is that there's piece of I did see tracks. I don't think that was a full lace front. I think it was pieces. That's what I saw. Yeah. Who touched the chest? I'm not telling that. 
I'm not telling that. I can't tell that. It's not public, and I'm not going to do that. Because then I'm participating in either spreading a truth or a lie, but definitely participating in damaging somebody's reputation and bringing out something that wasn't public. I'm not doing it. I don't get it either. Jamal at the nail shop and we were eyeball to eyeball. He's short. Lisa, you hate short men. So, of course, you don't get it. <laughs> you, don't like, you don't like short men. That's what that is. Yes, it is rumored that Jamal has acid breath. It is rumored. It is rumored. And then Shamako met him face to face and experienced it. And that's why Kim was saying that Kim that ain't met him face to face and experienced it. If he did, I don't know nothing about it. Let me see. Uh, she insists on doing all these deviant, dishonest shows on Larry. I don't know who you're talking about. And and why are we discussing that? You know, I don't understand why y'all y'all do that. I say I don't even operate when I don't care about something, don't like something, don't believe something, don't want something. It gets none of my attention. But what I realize is that some of you other people, probably earth signs and water signs, um, air signs and fire signs were a little bit different. Um, we, I don't give that any attention. And, and it, it bewilders me, why would you do that? Like some woman sent me, some, they sent me Jamal and Whitehead during the interview. Granted, I'm glad I know about it. We talked about it last night. But I'm like, why are you, why are you sending me this? You know, I don't, I don't fuck with now one of them. I don't hate either one, but we just don't. So why are you sending me this? Why are you sending me when another blogger says something negative about me? I want you to think. Why would I want to know? I do not care. It's disappeared, you know. And it's going. And from this moment forward, can to hear me in mods? Anybody who makes a question and ask, block. Cause I, I, you don't even know my spirit. I don't, I don't take up my. Folk don't live in my head free. Folk don't even get to talk to me free. You don't get to ask me questions free unless you are a patron, somebody I'm coaching. I'm receiving go to to rumor. You know, I'm to my coaching through Patreon. You can ask me, and then one on one questions. The lowest. Aspect of the coaching for me through Life Guide is twelve thousand over just over twelve thousand dollars. The the youngest or smallest or most affordable package when you get one on one with time meaning I you have to be with me physically as part of your package is twenty five thousand. I am not wired to be interested in helping you free or hearing anything you have to say on a one on one basis but i'm not wired to do that do not waste your time and and save me from the irritation i am not interested at all okay so i cleared it up about what he said about tasha's titty i cleared it up about carton sexuality i cleared that up concerning the Manasseh and Jordan thing, which I've already repeated a thousand times. And I think I cleared up some other things. Did is there anything else I forgot? I'm not going to lie, it disappoints me to learn about the whole Jake's family. Well you were, for lack of better words, set up to be duped. One thing that the church does is make sure that they make the parishioners think that the people who have the mic are perfect men and women. They, there is no such thing. And they make mistakes. Now, you find out the integrity of that person, because that's what matters, when they make a mistake. Oh, that, that's when you find out who they are. So I don't think you should judge anybody by their fall or their foolishness. I think you should judge people according to how they handle the wrong they have done or done to them. That's where you're going to start seeing the integrity and character. And that's what you believe. That and the patterns that follow up and around it. Yeah. Do you, did you believe Cora was LBGTQAI plus? I don't want to answer that. And only reason I'm not answering is because 
I would have to say something that I am not going to make public. All right. Um, nothing surprises you about people? Me either. I'm past it. It took me some years, but nothing surprises me anymore. That's right. Watch patterns. Don't believe people. Believe patterns. You said that kind of just answered the question. Well, you can't never know with me because I'm the king of talking in code. And I do it in my regular life. Riddles, codes, riddles, codes. So you, you might think you know and you might not. Because <laughs> I can talk in the code. Just join. Who are we talking about? You have to rewind, baby. Official Raymond True, you're very wise. I like your spirit. Thank you. I, thank you. I am. I'm glad you recognize that. Pray for me. Uh, Lisa said, the king of kings. She, she's the queen of saying that I am the king of talking in codes and riddles. It is true. No one is talking about William Murphy. What are you talking about William Murphy? How did he get in this? Uh... Nothing at all. Welcome to the Players Club. I don't believe nothing. Show me something. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dr. Reed. Oh, I love you too. Now, that is Carlton Pearson's um, doppelganger. Dancing Priest. On IG, that's his name. D-A-N-C-I-N-P-R-I-E-S-T. Go look. I'm about to sign off. You're about, oh, he is. Favors him more than anybody I know. Dr. Reed, we love you. You are loved. Don't forget it. Yeah, I know, and I feel it. Thankfully, I have um, family, friends, and then my spiritual community that I serve, and my parents and family members, you know, even back in North Carolina, I have a lot of love around um, and support. And I feel it most of the time. So that's a blessing, isn't it? God knows it is. I remember a time I couldn't feel it even if it was there. Um, but thanks be to God. My Aquarian brother, what up? All right, so make sure, I think I covered everything. Make sure you you go listen to Yatin. Please download it. Don't just stream it, but stream it too. Um, I'm going to be dropping tomorrow the behind the scenes from Will McRae, patrons only, tier one. And uh, make sure you get my book, The Church Critic, because you understand my land from which I do my work. So you ain't got to be confused and listen to what somebody else say, what I do and what I think. They lie. It's in my book, less than 100 pages. So go read and find out. Uh, I can't believe my two children's name, Majesty Julian, like Cardinal Pearson. Wow. Yes, that's true. Yes, I'm an Aquarius. Um, what else do I need to say? Oh, if you are a patron, meet me July the 28th in Atlanta is our yearly Reformation experience. Make sure that you are there. If you're a patron, you can come. If you're not a patron, you can't come. You have to be a patron. To come on that Sunday on the 28th. And it's going to be electric and powerful. And in order for you to be on the same vein. Spiritually and frequency. You're going to need to go ahead and get in Patreon. And be on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays. And you say oh I see what this is. So you don't come in there. And make sure you wear black. That's our color this year. You don't come in. You're, if not you'll come in there and you'll see what's happening. And you won't discern it. At the right time level. You just think, oh, they've had in church. Oh, oh, I ain't had church like this in a long time. But there's a there's a deeper transcendent experience that is happening. And it, it, it is a sharp cutting prophetic and apostolic spirit that is in it that can change you forever. But you can't just like it's almost like if, if you got a furnace over here burning super, super hot. You put your hand inside. You get hot. Oh, it's hot. But you have, you have no understanding of the burning that has been taking place in order for it to be at that frequency. 
You know, so you getting scorched as opposed to consumed in the fire. So I, if you want to come July the 28th, you need to go ahead and set your spirit in the incubator that is created by spirit every Sunday and Wednesday. So you will be a fit for that kind of flow. I don't care if you end up on the floor on the 28th and receive prophecy, you know, in such an experience. It's not going to hit as deep if you can go ahead and get your room prepared for that kind of elevation. So bring your whole hand over there. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Larry Live. Um, if you are in Patreon and you are donating at a certain amount, you probably got to be very aggressive between now and June 1st because that's when it stops. But there, you, you're you going to want to be in some of our panels that's going to be happening all week for five days. It's going to be absolutely so crazy what we're going to be experiencing. And I want you to be a part. Jeremiah. Oh, hey, lady. Say you're handsome. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yeah, Ethelena today didn't do too bad, did he? Yeah. And your authentic vibration frequency, the Sex in the Church podcast. Thank you. As a podcast and public theologian, I appreciate your persistence. Thank you. We support you on HeavenRadioFM.com. Better than ever, really. I hope you plan the new one and not just the old one with me and my sister. The new one is mixed better. I mean, although that song was recorded in 13, so it was with the time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so very much. Hit like, hit share, join Patreon, come on over. Tonight, I'll be in Patreon at 7 o'clock, and we will be finishing everything concerning the eclip you know, the ecliptic and Aquarian and the retrograde energy has collided. Let me repeat, because I don't think you understand. We have been sitting in the collision for several days since April the 1st of an Aquarian, ecliptic, and also retrograde energy. And this, and you're in it, and you don't know what the hell you're in. And you're in it, and you do not know how to extract for your future out of it. And I have been telling people how. And so you come over tonight, you join up Patreon, and this is the night you can ask me any question. Now, to be in that tonight, you can't join Patreon just tier one. You have to join tier two. So getting there, even if you just do it for the night, ask me a few questions. Or you can ask me any question in the chat. Get on tier two and then cancel it tomorrow. <laughs> but go ahead on and, and come on in. I right. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Oh my God, I didn't know this thing was still on. I'm sorry. <laughs>
How long has been off? Wait a minute. Uh, cause cause this is actually from um IG. How long has this been left on? I don't know what 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 has happened. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let me say this. Um, make sure you listen to Yatin and try to download it. Oh, this thing is this thing is blurry. Hold on. Better. Um, download Yatin, please. Listen to it. Make sure you get the book. Um, Church credit. You need. Oh, you ain't gonna understand the lands from whence I work. And tonight I'll be with my patrons. Come on over there, Isaac Miles. You said the twenty eighth. You'll be there. Great. I want to see you in person. Um, what else? I don't know. Forgot. I started doing some mess, you guys. I don't even know what would happen. We could not hear you while it was off. Okay, that's good. You, I mean, it wouldn't have been that interesting anyway. But yeah. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? Mm, have I forgotten anything? Tell why I feel like I'm forgetting something. July 28th, if you're a patron, you, you can come. And you can be with me tonight if you're paid in Patreon tier two. You can ask me any question. God. Oh, let me make a statement as it relates to something I highlighted. There was a guy in here that asked me a question about um, Conscious TV. Y'all know Conscious TV. He has been covering all things concerning me, my family, my business when we got attacked. He was already a very faithful patron. So and y'all know on Patreon, I'll put everything and say everything and show everything. So he was a perfect <laughs> candidate for doing what he's been doing ever since 2019. And he has been, okay, actually on now, actually on now. Um, he has been covering things and everybody knows that we, are, we have a good relationship. And him and William do not have a good relationship. I don't have anything to do with that. Um, and it's really just simple as that. I don't have anything to do with that. Conscious doesn't talk, talk to me about William. William doesn't talk to me about Conscious. And as long as it stays that way, I think everything is okay. Whatever they have concerning each other, professionally or regularly, and that is their business. Conscious doesn't trash William to me. William doesn't trash Conscious to me. It's just life, you guys. This is how it is, and that, there's that. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen me talk to people, other people that may not be friends with each other. I don't get into all those type things. I just don't have anything to do with that. I'm glad you enjoyed the, the um, interview, Vicky. I'm glad that you did. I'm thinking of doing it again next month. Um, maybe I better get it in by the end of the month. But it depends on what else what's happening in the church because Williams niche is the church. He does sports as well and a little bit of politics, as I do. But both of our niches basis is really the the church. So if something is going on in the church, then we will be able to have a good show. Although me and him have been doing, I mean, shows for years, so we probably can rehash some stuff and discuss that. Because he may have a part, I may have a part that I know, and we share it together. So it's just how that is. But I'm gonna let you guys go. Hold on for a minute. Hold on just for a minute about the sign off. Okay. Hold on. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully we can do it again. It's all about the laughter and having a great time. All right. 
they somebody said they might not trash each other to you, but they trash each other to the public for sure. Okay, then then they carry on. I mean, I don't have nothing to do with that. Do y'all, do y'all want me to be upset and involved in that? I can do that. Um, no. Somebody said maybe we'll mention. No, we will not be mentioning any of these people on the platform. And don't you put it in here so you can still stay here. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye.